All right, here with Ramon Batman McKenzie, one of Jamaica's most promising athletes. Um, Ramon, you were with the Tyson Gay camp, coached by Lance Brahman, since leaving Calabar High. Um, you're now back in Jamaica. Uh, tell us the reasons why you have decided to return to Jamaica. Um, I came back to Jamaica to be closer to my family, um, to pursue businesses and to be closer to friends, just to be at home, you know. All right. You have been here t since September, right? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people would say it's a bit coincidental that shortly after, you know, Tyson Gay's positive test that you have decided to return to Jamaica. Did, did that scenario had anything to do with you, with you returning? Um, not at all, you know, because I had it in mind to come back from earlier in the year, but I didn't make, make up my mind fully because I love to be overseas. The type of atmosphere is just different, relaxing, and I didn't like the fast-paced life here in Jamaica. But based on what I want to do in order to go forward in the future, I had to come back to Jamaica to do it. So. The incident with Tyson Gay, um, it didn't affect my decision. How did you take it though? Because I know you must look up to Tyson. Um, it was shocking at first, but then uh, probably two days after he found out, we spoke over the phone before he came back to where I was and actually understood what happened and got the full details. So. Is more of me feeling sorry for him because he's not that type of person, you know. So I just hope that everything works out for the best for him. All right. How was it training with Tyson and, you know, having Lance Brahman as your coach, one of, one of the, the, the most regarded coaches in track and field? Um, it was a great experience because me going there, I thought that I was actually a sprinter. I was far from being a sprinter, you know, <clears throat> sorry, and they taught me a lot in terms of technical stuff and actually how to be a man because I went there as a boy. So being there, it was very helpful in terms of me growing up and they actually always give me advice in order to go forward. All right, you have returned to your high school coach, Mr. Michael Clark, you're now at Aiken Track Club. Um, a lot of people would, would think that an athlete of your caliber would have chosen Glenn Mills, um, regarded as one of the greatest coaches, spring coaches of all time, and the racers with Usain Bolt and Johan Blake, or MVP with Stephen Francis. You know, Why did he decide to come back to your old coach, Michael Clark, at a, a, you know, improving but still small club as Akon? Um, that started off with probably loyalty. And when I was leaving, I always said to myself, it was coming back, it would be him. And for me to come back and go to a club like Racers or MVP, I'd still have to wait a couple of years in order to be where I want to be because the coaches don't understand me and that's that's just the norm. Coaches have to get to know their athletes but Michael Clark already know me so it it wasn't a hard decision to make. How's the training gone so far? You have, you have gone a couple of months already? Um, it's been good. I, I'm still in the moving process so um, I've been in and out of training but for the most part, the workout has been going great. I lost a lot of weight. I feel fit compared to probably a couple of years before. So I'm really looking forward to great things. You mentioned lost a lot of weight. Um, people noticed that while you were with um, Tyson Gay's camp. Um, a lot of questions were being asked. You know, Ramon is overweight. Why is Ramon you know, running the 100, 
and the 200 instead of the 400. We get to that a little later, but give us the reasons why, you know, you were overweight with the Tyson Gay camp and you, you chose to, to, to run a lot of hundreds instead of the 200 and the 400. Um, when I was it a coach's decision or was it your personal decision? It was both because I couldn't handle the amount of work that was needed to run the 400 when I just got there. And uh, for me to actually be good at the 400, it requires a lot of work. And I kept on getting hurt over and over. So they had to back me off. And then I just decided to sprint. But due to the lot of injuries, I started to get gain weight because you get a lot of time off from training. So I had a lot of issues where that is concerned that I had to deal with and also me being a kid going over there because I like junk food. So whenever I see it, I just go for it. So that was one of the things that I had to learn in order to be good. You have to have a proper diet and all of those stuff. So it was a learning experience for me. All right. Um, a lot of people, you know, were wondering, you know, what is happening with Ramon. Um, there were murmurs of, you know, discipline in discipline. Um, you know, you're not taking the track as serious. You mentioned you were a kid. Uh, we spoke to Brahman and Tyson Gay, two separate interviews, and they hinted a little bit towards, you know, you growing up and it might take you longer than a Nikhil Ashmead, your arch rival from Champs, who almost immediately stepped to the fore and showed significant progression. Uh, was it mostly because of you personally, or was it the, the, just the wrong situation for you? What was it? Um, it was probably me personally. I had a lot to deal with in terms of growing up because when I was at Calabar, uh, to me, I was like a rock star. So I had to, Batman. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> I had to deal with a lot of challenges, both mentally and physically, because physically I didn't like to train. A lot of people didn't know that. And uh, mentally, I still believe that if I don't train, I still could just get up one day and just run fast. But in the professional world, it's not like that. So I had to go through a process to learn about all of those stuff. So probably that's what they hinted about me growing up. So there you have it. Michael Clark is known for his hard workouts. Uh, he has been criticized, actually, of being too harsh on athletes as it relates to pushing them. How does training with him, he as your coach, compare to the Lance Brahman? Um, Lance Brown is kind of the same compared to Michael Clark and it's a coincidence that Michael Clark was actually a leader for Lance Brown in college so they kind of have the same traits but the workouts here to me are more harsher compared to the ones overseas because of the longer mileage and the sun that we train in here so I think being here and doing Michael Clark's workout I would actually like lose a lot of weight compared to when I was over there because over there you could train hard but the climate is different and out here doing Michael Clark's workout under the sun at is just a total different ball game so I think I just have to stay mentally tough in order to get through them. All right. Nikhil Ashmed, um, he was your, your training partner, our tribal at Champs. A lot of people rem remember you guys going back and forth in the 200 and the 4x4. Four four. He did exceptionally well. He even got a relay goal at the World Championships in Moscow in August. Uh, came, fo came fourth in the 200 meter, I think it was by 0 0.02 seconds or 0 
how did it feel knowing he was doing so well and people projected you to 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 do better than nickel but um as i said you were having your struggles how difficult was it for you um it wasn't difficult at all because the same person tyson gay he actually told me once that you cannot rush greatness and everything takes time so if it's not your time you cannot rush it you just have to wait until your time and me being there seeing how hard he worked i couldn't be like i felt some kind of way because i was supposed to be there i was actually proud and i was more so mad at myself because he has a lot of discipline i don't and i think that over the time i gained that discipline from him so not tyson but nickel yeah or both probably more so nickel he is a very disciplined athlete compared to any athlete i ever seen in this entire world so i think it was more so him so i didn't feel any way no shape or form mm. all right um a lot of people are wondering you know well they are saying they are criticizing you they have been criticizing you why ramon don't do the 400 you know you 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 have the build you did well at champs you know what what is it you're going to choose to do are you still going to be running the hundreds because people have scoffed <laughs> at that you know the the entire idea of you running 100 meters they're saying you're not a 100 meter runner you know what is what is it going to be for batman going forward um going forward it be the four and the two the 100 actually was for me to get faster because a lot of people didn't know that in order to run the 400 properly you have to be fast it's no longer uh it's actually a sprint yeah it's actually a sprint now so you have to be fast and i was working on my speed so i took all those criticism and just smile at it because they didn't know what was the plan for the future so it was about money no 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 shape or form it wasn't about money it's never been about money when it comes to me racing it's always what's best for me um a lot of people you know would be wondering you know w- what event you're going to choose to run i mean people scoffed at the idea of you running the 100 you know they they have been saying you, you should be focusing on the 400 meters since you know there's a little loophole there as it relates to 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 talent you will make the jamaica team easy and you have the body for it and you did well at champs um you have said that you know coming to michael clark the hard tough workouts have been working for you your body is responding to it you have lost weight and everything what are the immediate object- objectives um you know what 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 marks do you 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 put put aside for yourself to attain in the short term um in the short term i'd love to make the commonwealth team um if i don't make it running the 400 individually to be on the relay would be good because it's actually my first year doing the 400 for the, since 2009 so it's been quite a while and uh, also try to go sub 20 seconds in the 200 meter because i think i've enough speed now and with this kind of workout i think i'll be strong enough to do it so those are my two short term goals time you have any time in mind um not sure i would love to go sub 45 that that would put the icing on the cake but for times i'm really not sure mm. all right what should jamaica expect from you um you have mentioned you 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 have had um indiscipline issues you know growth is issues you know tran you know the transition from junior to senior hasn't been the easiest for you what should jamaica expect from batman short term and long term um short term a lot of surprises and long term a different athlete i think that's what jamaica should expect um way different from when i left um how different in terms of me being mentally strong and 
working hard to be physically fit. So there's a lot of difference right there. Before I didn't have that. I noticed you, you dropped the Batman moniker and the mask for a brief period. Um, you're now back at it. Did that whole Batman thing play a part in, in you know, the transition from the junior to senior? Um, in some way it did. And uh, the reason why I didn't even wear the mask for a while is because I wasn't ready for, to wear it. I believe that a lot of people looked up to the mask. And if in myself I wasn't doing what's right, I, I didn't feel fit to wear it. You didn't have the, the matching achievements? No, I didn't at all. So um, I think they'll see it real soon. And uh, I hope they're proud. All right. Um, Jamaica. Track and field uh, has come under some serious criticisms recently. You know, the whole drug scandal with Jadko and everything. Um, athletes that I'm sure you look up to, Asafa Powell, Veronica Campbell-Brown, you know, what are your thoughts on the whole doping controversy, the doping scandal in Jamaican athletics? I think the whole doping scandal is a way to put down the athletes because smear campaign say that again smear campaign yes indeed um i think everybody does take drugs you know but there there are different kinds of drugs and not everybody is a cheat and there are limits that you could take a certain type of drug or whatever that people don't really know behind the doors like they oh you take something they say that's illegal no there are different drugs that you could take because the human body cannot keep up with all of this you have to take supplements vitamins and stuff but some people just take stuff that is just over the edge and if you're going to label everybody as a drug cheat because they're doing well I think that's really unfair because some people do work hard to be successful. So this whole scandal, I hope everybody just like just look past it and try to move forward. You so you believe it's unfair. You you you, you are confident that Jamaica does not have a drug problem, a cheating problem in in track and field. I would be stupid to say that because I don't know what everybody do when they go home but in my heart I don't think so I don't I don't think Jamaica has a problem like that all right thank you very much Ramon and I hope you know this this aspect of your career goes better than the previous one thank you very much and I hope so too <laughs>